obviously. We are not quite ready to go completely live yet. Uh, we have had a couple of technical difficulties here at the station. Um, so anyway, let me just reiterate one more time. If you have a ministry in or around Sevier County um, and you're available Tuesday night, May the 15th, we would love to invite you to our open here house here at DDX Studios. Um, we are hoping to have some really good conversations about how social media can advance your ministry. Uh, so please mark your calendars for that. Um, also had the opportunity to talk a little bit about Bloom and Barbecue and Bluegrass, which is coming up May 18th and 19th. I forgot my button this time, so sorry guys. Um, absolutely great event, uh, downtown Sevierville. You're gonna wanna make sure to bring the family out to that. Uh, and of course, Sevier County is just an awesome place to live, work, and play. What's the number one complaint though, Rhonda? Traffic. Traffic, absolutely. Um, so our upcoming segment, we're gonna talk about what you need to know about the traffic in Sevier County um, and how to stay safe out there. Um, if you will join us back here in just a bit, in fact, just stick around. My intro's kinda cool, watch it. Uh, <laughs> Rhonda, roll the intro, we'll I'll see ready. you in a few. Watch it. Burnett and you are watching Down Home with Ashley. Um, many of you know me as the Director of Development for Mountain Hope Good Shepherd Clinic here in Sevier County. We do medical and dental for folks who don't have insurance. If you need that resource or know someone who does, I would be more than happy for you to reach out to me. Uh, you're welcome to message me at Down Home with Ashley. In addition to that, I am a real estate agent for Britain Real Estate Services and now I am also a host here at DDX Media and we have had the opportunity to talk about all sorts of things um, here. We've introduced you to some amazing people who are your friends and neighbors in Sevier County. We get to talk about why this is such a great place to live. I've had a lot of real estate centric um, topics come on the show and those have been amazing. But, you know, Rhonda and I were chatting a bit before the show. What is the absolute worst thing, the number one complaint that people have about Sevier County? If you haven't already started screaming at your set that uh, it's traffic, then it probably at least crossed your mind. So we're a great place to live, work, and play, uh, but traffic is, is sometimes an issue. And I have invited a good friend of mine and local attorney, Adrian Waters Ogle, on today to talk about traffic here in Sevier County. It's good to have you here, Adrian. Hey, Ashley. It's good to be here. All right. So tell me a little bit, we talked some before we came on about crash data in Sevier County. What can you tell us about collisions in Sevier County, Tennessee? Well, what I can tell you, Ashley, is that in 2017, there were 6,500, a little over 6,500 car accidents in Sevier County. Um, and the number one cause was tailgating. Um, following improperly was so if you follow too closely, you're much more likely to be in an accident. Yes, and I think that it's pretty understandable. We have and are lucky to have um, visitors to our area. We have almost 15 million people that come every year um, to see to see the sites, to look at the mountains, and um, sometimes they don't know where they're going. Right. <laughs> and um, when they're looking for where they're going or their turn off, there's some sudden stops. And as locals, one thing we can do to stay safe is just make sure that you put a good distance between you and the car in front of you. That way you have the opportunity to stop um, without it turning into an accident. Absolutely. So if, if worse comes to worse and you do find yourself in an accident, Adrian, what steps should you take as a driver uh, once, once a collision has occurred? Okay. And 
You know, um, car accidents are something that could happen to anybody at any time. Um, oddly enough, actually in studio today, uh, I was speaking to two different people, one that was in a car accident yesterday and then somebody that I, I believe it was maybe last week that was in a car accident. This is happening to our teenage kids, you know, it could happen to you, to your grandmother. And there are some steps to take that um, can help you through the process because it's confusing. Um, a lot of people, they know they have auto insurance, but they don't understand how it works. They don't know what their coverage entails and um, what the process is. And um, I do have some tips okay. that could help you um, so deal with a car accident. Adrian, if I find myself involved in a collision, what's mm -hmm. the first thing I need to do? Okay, well the first thing I would say is check, you know, check yourself, make sure you're okay, the passengers in your car. You can do the same um, with the other vehicles, with the parties in the other vehicles. But once you verify that, um, go ahead and call the police and of course remain on, on site at the crash. And um, depending on your injuries, I mean this might not always be possible, but we all have our cell phones and we're always snapping pictures. So if, if you have your cell phone and you're able to, just snap some pictures um, of your vehicle, the other cars involved. I mean, if you do have any injuries, it can be good to document that as well. Um, if you were not at fault for the accident, then you're, you're gonna be contacted by the other driver's insurance company. And um, this is where I would want people to know that they don't have to give a recorded statement. Um, it's never a good idea to be giving a recorded statement a couple of hours after you were in an accident. And or immediately after. Or right. immediately after. These, the insurance adjusters are going to try to, they want to get the claim settled as quickly as possible and they want to talk to you as quickly as possible. Um, and that's not a good idea. And the insurance adjusters, it's important to know, they work for an insurance company, an insurance company who makes money by taking in premiums more premiums than they're actually paying in claims. Um, so they have an incentive to devalue your claim. And I, I hate to sound like a, comp a conspiracy theorist or, or say that all, <laughs> lump all adjusters together, but I've been doing this for about 10 years. And you've been on both sides I of have, the aisle here. Yes, so, yeah. right out of law school, I started out as an insurance defense attorney and I represented um, the at-fault drivers in car accidents. And then I got the opportunity to actually come to Sevier County in 2009 and switch over to plaintiff's work. Um, I think that my clients and the people that come to see me, I think that there's a prevailing attitude that if you file a lawsuit or if you're, if you're trying to get money for your injury, um, that it's somehow unsavory. But what I find is the people that come to me are saying, I wouldn't be here talking to you if my claim had been handled correctly. Um, most people just want the adjuster and the insurance company to handle it fairly. And most drivers want that as well, the at-fault drivers. If I'm in an accident, I'm responsible. I have insurance. I would want my insurance company to pay out. But um, unfortunately, the process isn't designed where that always happens. Um, you have the right to tell the adjuster on the other side that you want to deal with them in writing and that's the best way to communicate mm -hmm. because then you have a record of what's being said. Um, I would also advise that you take a look at your own insurance policy because there could be some coverage that you could take advantage of to help pay your medical bills right. such as med pay coverage um, and that's something that you need to ask your insurance company about. You may have five thousand or even ten thousand dollars to help you deal with medical. your out of pocket medical expenses. So, right, these are for medical bills, so, and, and I think it's important to note that even if you don't have health insurance, right, Adrian, mm -hmm. if you feel that you need to be checked out after an accident, if you think there may be some injury, that sometimes you can be covered through your auto insurance, but that's something you need to ask questions about ahead of time. Yes, that that is, and it's a good thing to get to know from your, from your claims agent, but after you've been in an accident, um, look at your policy your insurance policy and you can also look at your declaration page and this is going to tell you the kind of coverage you have and your limits um, and you can go from there and your, in your insurance company has an obligation to explain what coverage you have available um, and if you know the right questions to ask your insurance company that can be very helpful 
And of course, at, at, for those of you who've been in an accident, you know that it's not your agent that you're dealing with. No. Your agent's the, the great guy that you've known forever that you bought your policy from, but there's a very good chance that you'll have an adjuster who's from out of town or maybe even out of state who's going to handle your claim. So tell me a little bit about how I should handle an adjuster. Okay, well, um, if you want to try to deal with an adjuster yourself, I would say um, the first step when they contact you, I would be polite, but just say it's not a good time for me to talk or I, I can't talk right now. Um, give me your contact information. Ask them for an email or a fax number. And once you get that, I would the first correspondence I would send is something asking what documentation do you need from me to process this claim. Um, that way everything is in black and white. It's, it's hard if you don't understand the rules, if you don't understand what they need, um, what documentation they need for your claim. It, it's very frustrating. Um, and part of the process can be to delay a claim. To The insurance adjuster might ask for things they really don't need. Well, you've given your medical bills, but now they need bills with different coding. The coding's not correct. Well, I mean, you yeah. get, that's, that's not true. They don't need that. It's a delay tactic that can be used um, to delay paying you a fair settlement. So if you find yourself in a situation where you're a little overwhelmed, and maybe you're dealing with an adjuster and you have questions, uh, maybe you don't know what's appropriate to send them or not send them, you don't know what questions you should be asking them, they're asking you an awful lot of questions, um, tell me a little bit about where you might come in as an attorney and help that process. Okay, well, um, I am very lucky to be able to do what I love and that's, I love being able to help injury victims. Um, get the compensation that they that they deserve and what I do is I come in and try to take all the stress as far as handling the claim so that people can concentrate on getting better and my clients can concentrate on their treatment I handle all communications with the adjusters and um, I would get all the medical bills and I also double double check coverage just like I was talking about MedPay um, when MedPay coverage is available I get that as quickly as I can because I know if you've been hurt in an accident you're out of work um, you're going to have expenses. It makes it a, a very difficult time. And a lot of insurance adjusters realize accident victims are vulnerable. The longer they delay, the more the bills pile up. They're affecting your medical bills, can affect your credit score. And, and you get to a point where you just think, I just want to settle this thing. So um, if you have questions, Adrian, and someone, if someone's in this situation and they're feeling a bit overwhelmed, or if they find themselves in this situation, you know, a year from now, two years from now, and they want to contact an attorney. A lot of attorneys offer free consultations, is that correct? Yes, um, I certainly do offer okay. free consultations. So it doesn't really cost you anything to talk to someone. And I've heard you say on a number of occasions, you know, I will tell you if you don't need an attorney, correct? Yes, so. I, I certainly would. If you've got a situation where you went to the emergency room, you know, and, and you didn't have any injuries, you didn't have it, you bounced right back after, you know, a couple of days, you might not need an attorney. Um, but you still need to be thoughtful about how you handle the adjuster and you still need to, there's nothing wrong with knowing this, the proper steps to take. And sometimes just a little extra advice is very helpful. Right? Yes. So if someone wants to reach out to you and your office, how would they do that? Well, you can do that by calling my office at 865-429-3600. We also have a website which is www dot gwo firm dot com and I think I told you this I'm gonna put up a post on our website and um, just detailing some bullet points about what you can do after you've been involved in an accident and um, I know that most people they want to be treated fairly and they think if they cooperate with the process with the insurance adjuster that um, everybody's going to be playing fair and unfortunately that doesn't always happen um, and I'll be happy to speak with with anybody, even if they just want me to review the offer that, that's been given them, given to them regarding their case, um, I'm happy to do that. So feel free to reach out to Adrian directly. Um, if you have questions or didn't get the number for any reason, you're welcome to message our site or Mountain Fun Life and we will be happy to, to forward that information on to her. Um, again, I, I am grateful that you were here today um, to talk about worst case scenario with the traffic that we deal with in Sevier County. Thank you so much. Thank you for this Appreciate opportunity, you Ashley. Good all to right. see you. Thank you all for joining me today on Down Home with Ashley. I look forward to seeing you again soon.